everyone welcome to Nouvea. I'm Monique and today I'm sharing my new Christmas pattern with you. How did we get a week away from Christmas already? Luckily this is a quick tat. It's just a small little wreath that you might like to add in your Christmas cards. You might like to have it as a topper on your presents. You might like to add a loop and stiffen it and hang it from your Christmas tree. You're going to need a shuttle and ball in size 20 thread, 24 seed beads and five stitch markers. Let's go. We want continuous thread to work the central part of our motif. Load 12 beads onto your thread, push them along a bit. The beads need to be on our ball thread, not on our shuttle. Now wind about 90 centimetres onto your shuttle, leaving the thread attached to the ball. We're starting a ring with a count of eight pico eight. Our picots need to measure three eighths of an inch when they're open. Reverse your work. Slide a bead up to sit at the back of your hand as you set up for a chain. I'm using magic loops to hide my tails, so I'm going to put one loop in now. You can, of course, sew your tails in if you prefer. We have two double stitches. Put your bead up and work your beaded pico. bead at the back of my pico gauge. The tails of my magic loop are running with my core thread and we're working one more double stitch. Reversing our work. We're going to repeat what we just did until we have four rings and four chains. So our rings are a count of eight pico eight. Chains are two beaded pico and two. If you're using magic loops, remember to include the second loop in your last chain. you've cut your threads take your core thread through to the back make sure you don't pierce your magic loop We're going to tie a square knot.
We're going to place beads on each pico and secure with a stitch marker. You can use a crochet hook to do this, but the hole in my beads is really tiny. So even my, <laughs> even my smallest, oh my goodness, even my smallest crochet hook won't fit through the hole. So I'm using a needle and thread to place my beads. I'm putting three seed beads on each peacock. round two. For round two you should still have eight beads on your ball thread. We're taking both our shuttle and our ball thread and looping them back on themselves like so. We're going to tap over our tail as we start a ring with a count of six. We have a small joining pico and two, then three decorative picots with a count of two after each pico. Make your decorative picots quite tall. Mine are three eighths of an inch because I want them to sit just slightly higher than my chain. Reverse your work and set up for a chain. I'm going to pop a stitch marker on the working thread. This will give us a space to join back to when we've made it all the way around. Tutting over our tail, we're working 12. Lock join to your ring. I'm actually going to get rid of my tail there first.
reverse your work and set up your next ring. So we're working we're working six adjoining pico and two. Then you have decorative picos with a count of two after each pico. Reverse your work. Bring a seed bead down as you set up for your next chain. You want that to sit right in there. And we are chaining 12. We're going to use a lock join to connect everything together. So remove one of the stitch markers from your central motif. Use your crochet hook to go down through the pico, then down through the pico of your ring. Pull up a loop and complete your lock join. So we're pulling that loop through both picots. And lock joining the two together. Make sure your chain is positioned correctly before you pull that lock join down. Go through to the other side. So work your way around the motif repeating what we just did. So you're working a ring of six, a joining pico and then two, then three decorative picots with a count of two after each pico. You reverse your work, chain 12 and lock join to the ring. Reverse your work again, make your next ring. Reverse again, bring your bead down to work your chain of 12 and lock join to the pico. There are three rings in each quarter. The middle ring is the only one to have a bead on either side. Now we started with the second ring in the fourth quarter, but I'm going to start counting with this as ring one. We have two and three. 
When you come to join rings three, six and nine, you're joining your chain back to the central motif as well as to the ring, just like we've finished doing right now. Again, if you're using magic loops, remember to put them in your last ring and your last chain. need to join our first ring to our last ring. Now you can do it the same way as we've been doing, joining everything together to join the central motif back to the chain with a lock join. I prefer to tie mine with a square knot. Either way we need to remove our stitch marker. We're going down through the little hole left by the stitch marker and down through your pico of your last ring and either pull up your core thread and do a lock join or pull it through and tie a square knot. Don't forget to include your last bead on your working thread. Now I was going to Put magic loops in my chain and my ring but I forgot so it looks like I will be sewing my tails in now you can use different things to stiffen your work it all comes down to personal preference some people like starch others prefer sugar water some people like glue I like to use Elmer's glue all mixed with a little bit of water you often see posts where people talk about glue to water ratios. I personally use a ratio known as that's about right. Yep, I made that up. That's a new bear ratio used with new bear measurements. Come and I'll show you what I mean. Now I have blocked this. It didn't need a lot, but I like to block pretty much everything. Blocking my work before I stiffen it means when it's covered in glue, 
everything just kind of falls into place. I don't need to go around and re-block. Now to make up our concoction, we're not going to need a huge amount for this piece. I do about that much for our glue. We want a splash of water. Mix that in. We want a thick consistency, so not quite a paste, but not runny either. So we're going to adjust our portions accordingly. If it's too runny, like that is a little bit, add more glue. If it's too thick, add more water. We mix that until we get it to what I like to call the it'll do stage, which is about there. Pop your tadding in. We're going to cover both sides. Make sure it's nicely covered. You can see some spots around here that aren't quite done. Squeeze out any excess on the side of your bowl. Now I use an old cork board because the cork soaks up any excess glue. I don't get pools of glue stuck to my work. You can use aluminium foil or paper, but if you use these, you want to make sure you turn your work every 10 minutes or so to avoid the glue pooling. When you set it back down, place it in a new spot. So I am just going to make sure my picos are all sitting nicely. And I just use a toothpick because I don't really want to get glue all over my good pins. That's looking, that's looking pretty good. So now we just wait for it to dry. Okay, so it's been probably about two hours since we laid this out to dry. You can see it's gone nice and stiff. There's no glue pulls or little flaky bits that we need to pull off. All the glue has been absorbed into our stitches. Our cork board's nice and clean, there's no um, glue residue on the cork and it's good to go. And we're done. I hope you enjoyed today. I wish everyone a very safe and a very happy Christmas. I'm going to be taking a break for a couple of weeks but I will see you all again in the new year. Bye!